one, so parcel two is saying they're here, parcel one is saying they're here, they're saying it's one that's going to be So I'd right. say if you want to get your approval, you can say let's take this off the camera for a building number two. You can't get that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think the purposes of moving forward with the private access way permit, um, they'd be willing to just, as a condition, take off that cleanup there, whereas it would make it less conforming for the non-conforming lot already. And you know, we could just adjust that plan, not to show the deed cleanup there. We could leave them as they stand, you know, rather than try to. Adjust um, to clean up this hatch area, essentially to define which is which. Because what, what I'm hearing is that if we define it in favor of parcel two, which is where they want to build their new house, and that makes the setback from their already non-conforming worse, that's something that you guys don't want to. We can't approve. We, we can't approve. Right? Well, or more technically, we can approve it, but right. you'll never get a building permit, which. Right. So I think what, we're, what we'd be willing to do is just right. leave it alone. We'll adjust our building setback about five feet from the conservative line, essentially, the, you know, and, and go, go forward that way. And just Meaning pull it off the plan completely? Right, not try to clean up. Just so that you <coughs> don't have turmoil over proving something that seems like you shouldn't be. Sure. And then it, it building, when you submit your... We have to adjust that building envelope that Five amount, foot. which is just drawing the line to the more conservative boundary. <coughs> okay. Well, then we just have to reflect that. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we're, you know, we're trying to, we don't want to have you win the battle and lose the war, you know, so right. that, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't help you. Sure. Um, other questions? Dave. I got a few questions here. Um, just out of curiosity, what's the status of the cottage? Is that still going to be a dwelling unit? With um, an well, occupied or a non occupied, or is it going to be? Probably would be unoccupied. We want to keep that as a guest cottage. Okay. And also, we have a handicapped child who is away at school right now. And in the event that he comes back, uh, we may have him stay in there. Oh, okay. I don't. I was just curious yeah. if it was going to still be. No, it wouldn't be any. Okay. There wouldn't be another family in there or another party in there. Um, family. There's some discussion on potentially having uh, a resident by the name of Half and Refa mm -hmm. um, use this driveway if, for some reason, something changed on their existing. Can you explain to me where that access would be? I don't know where that access would be. <laughs> okay. Actually, I, I don't. Just, I don't know what. I, I don't know what their right of ways are, and uh, so I really wouldn't want to comment okay. on that because I honestly don't know. All right. Uh, exactly what I'd, their rights are. I doubt very much knowing the situation that they'd ever use it, but I was just curious. There was a comment made to it. Yeah, and I. And I'm sorry, but I really I don't know uh, exactly what their rights are. Um, I, I guess the issue um, regarding the uh, conforming to the standards that the town engineer and the public works director um, has commented on, on their letters that we've received, I, 
I'm not sure how I feel. I, I think in my tenure on the, the board, um, several times in recent periods, we have required people to go to private access way standards. And I feel a little uncomfortable um, when, when we require one applicant to do it and then somebody else comes and we have another applicant. Um, I think I share that view with most of the members of the board. It's, it's an uncomfortable position to be in. But on the other hand, you've used that driveway. I call it a driveway even though it's going to be an access way. Um, for many years, and I'm sure that you've got out of that in snowy conditions and ice. Right, so yeah. <laughs> I have to take that into consideration. So I'm not quite as um, uncomfortable with that. I am very uncomfortable uh, with waving the asphalt entrance yeah. to the roadway. And I'll tell you, there's a couple of reasons. One reason is there's an applicant that came before us a couple of years ago, um, and he's in the audience tonight and he was required to do that on their property. Um, so it, I'd be uncomfortable um, for that reason and that there's several other applicants that have come. The purpose for that is uh, many reasons, but one of them, I'm a bike rider, um, and competitive bike rider, and uh, that's a dangerous situation. And one of the reasons that it's in the town ordinance is that the dirt access ways onto paved roads, especially through ways, are dangerous for bicycle riders. Mm -hmm. Just a little pebble like that can cause a serious accident. And, and what happens is the cars pick them up in a driveway, and when they get right to the roadway, if there's not a paved access way, that lots of times that pebble will come out in the road and that becomes a, mm -hmm. a situation that a bike rider has a hard time with. So, that, I think, is one of the main reasons it's on the ordinance. Um, and I, I would be uncomfortable with uh, approving it with anything less than a, a 10-foot tape. Wait, I understand your situation, but um, um, I also have to take into consideration the ordinance in the town and the requirements that have been made by other applicants. Um, I had one question uh, for Maureen. I noticed on the plan that was submitted to us that there's a, it looks like a wall. I guess it is a wall on the southwesterly corner that actually infringes on the, uh, what, the uh, shoreland 75 foot setback. Is a wall considered uh, an infringement on that 75 feet, or is that not? I believe in ex an existing wall, and so I didn't check into that. But I can tell you that I have seen situations where sea walls have been allowed to be constructed in order to preserve property, even within the 75-foot setback. Is that an existing wall? Well, we're talking about the wood. Right here, no, that's not an existing wall. Right there? No, that's not an existing wall. Is that what you're talking about? Maren, it's on the terrace. I see that. And I was just curious. Yeah, that, that doesn't look like it would be a problem, isn't it? Not this one. Oh. That was All I'm pointing out right. is no, that that yeah. really has right. to be right. on the other side. Yeah. No, I understand that. <laughs> Structure. Oh, I see where you're going. I think when I looked at that, it's a whole house. No. Yeah, I it's just this, this wall. Yeah, right here. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Griffin? Yes. I think when I looked at it, I just assumed that it would get shoved an extra foot out of the 75 feet when they actually built it. I, I just thought it, would be, it should be mentioned during that's, that yeah, discussion. That's not a retaining wall. No. I guess, I guess that's all my comments. Thank you. Other questions? Um, I. I'd have to echo uh, David's comments on both the 14-foot width and the um, paving at the end of the driveway. Um, uh, the paving at the end of the driveway, well, th these are both uh, required 
under the ordinance and there were reasons why the town required both of these things and we have to be consistent in how we apply them um, the uh, paving at the end of the driveway I know the town looked at reasons for that and decided that's what what they wanted to require and we have required that in in every other instance when somebody has come before us so I, I would be reluctant to, to waive that I understand why you would uh, you would want that waived and perhaps there are reasons why from plowing or whatever that that isn't a good ordinance but that isn't our call we have to apply what what the ordinance is um, as far as the 14 foot width um, again, we've heard from Public Works Director uh, and the uh, Fire Chief, uh, as well as the fact that the ordinance does require the 14 feet, and they both uh, would recommend that the 14 foot width be utilized. And again, uh, it, we, we should follow, I believe we should follow the ordinance in that case uh, as well. So. Um, with with those uh, requirements, I, I would feel comfortable going forward with the application. We do need to clean up the language uh, and in our approval make sure that we cover that note on the plan to reflect what you are now going to do in terms of the, the boundaries because that we don't want to leave that problem. And then uh, I guess do we need to address the stone wall issue because we don't want to approve a plan that's immediately in violation of the setback requirement. So uh, maybe that can be a condition that that wall just be moved. However, how many feet does it need to be moved? Outside of the 70. Outside of the 70, 75 foot setback. I have one question about, you mentioned trees. Now, are the trees within the 14 feet, and how many of them are there? Well, I counted today, there were probably at least 10 very large, very large trees. It would, it would really change the roadway, uh, the driveway, immeasurably. And I don't think my neighbor would go on with cutting down all those trees. Uh, you know, we, we do have a precedent for changing, because of trees, the width of the road. I have to say, if there are trees in the way, I'd be very concerned about removing them all to make it a 14-foot width for one house. And the fire chief initially said he thought it was all right, the 12-foot width. I agree with David about the paving. I think we have to stand very firm on that because it is in the ordinance, because there isn't any real, it isn't like removing trees to require the 12 feet of, the 10 feet of paving, excuse me. But the trees are another thing we really need to consider. Just to clarify on the trees for you, they do show up along the side. As noted, it's the larger trees, I count 11 on that side. Um, I think these little spots. They're kind yeah, of gray shade, and light gray shade. Things, and that would yep. substantially mm -hmm. change um, that driveway that has been in use for 25 years by us, other people before then, without any significant, without any problems getting vehicles done. Uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm Tom Dunham, and um, <clears throat> the, I understand the paving in the front. And, it's 10 feet, and, and I'm, um, I understand I'm riding a bike as well. But <clears throat> coming down the driveway, there's plenty of width all the way down. The constriction is in this area right here where the telephone pole is. <clears throat> and these trees are not saplings. These trees are um, 12 to 18 inches in diameter, <clears throat> and it's crazy to tear them down. <clears throat> and my neighbor just spent a significant amount of money landscaping their property with trees and <clears throat> I, all my neighbors want those trees to stay because of the environment and <clears throat> I mean and so, it's one thing if it was a new driveway it doesn't driveway's been there well over 100 years 
We have no problems getting in and out of there. Neither do the oil trucks, which would be some of the fire trucks. Yep, yeah, Barbara, go ahead. I'd just like to say clearly I'd be very comfortable leaving the 12 foot width and I think preserving the trees as paramount and requiring the 10 feet of paving at the next to the road. Peter? Any other questions? I don't have any other questions. I'm, I'm still wrestling with the 14 versus 12. This is not an easy decision, honestly. I, I see both sides of this. I mean, the fire chief's letter is important to me. Um, you know, when the fire chief came down and looked at it as a single fam family residence, which essentially this is, because we do own the cottage, but it will be used as a guest house um, at best. Um, and he didn't, you know, he didn't voice the concerns that, gee, this really needs to be a lot wider, we can't get through. Um, he had a comment, and I think they're noted on the plan, about a couple of pine trees, and those are, have been removed um, by the McGinn's, actually, um, in their um, landscaping efforts. And um, it, it just would be a shame, I think, to have to cut down all those trees to enlarge a road that is has served us well for 25 years. And was when the Partridges built their house, it was perfectly adequate, according to the bar chief. That's it. To do ease your fears a lot. <laughs> I, I understood. I'm a little nervous about Perkins too, I guess, when in reducing it. I mean, I know the rules specifically says we could. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah, the end I, of the line, so I, to speak. But go ahead, John. Well, I'm just looking at the fire chief's letter. He talks about a change from a private road to a private access way. What? When he said private road, he meant you driveway. Mean. That's okay. That's what I thought. Which is, that is what that's the intent so of that is to not, serve one. Right. But but how is that related to that issue of the other access um, or the other easement down that road where it could become a private road? Oh, um, well, Mr. Haffenreffer called me. He received a notice on this to make sure I was aware that there is a right of way across Parcel 2 to use Becky's Cove Lane. And if I mean, if you, if you set aside all the other physical issues, uh, this is a nothing right now. It has no status under our ordinance for conveying. Becky's Cove Lane has no status under our ordinance for conveying frontage. In order for any lot that only has frontage of Becky's Cove Lane to be able to count that frontage towards their frontage requirement and make the lot buildable, you need to bring it back to the planning board for some type of review. If if you're coming forward for just one lot, you go with a private access way permit. But a private access way can only serve one lot. So if Mr. Haffenraff or anyone else ever tries to use Becky's Cove Lane and they come to the planning board, they have to upgrade it to a private road. Mm. So, I mean, what you did do, I think it was an instance um, off of Gladys Road near Great Pond, you had one house being served by what was essentially a driveway, but the driveway was being constructed in a 50-foot wide right-of-way, and that right-of-way had access to more than one potential new lot. And so instead of allowing that property owner to build what was a driveway, you said, no, you need to meet the private access way standards. You need to build it to standard because there's a decent chance, there's a reasonable chance out there that someone else is going to have to come in after you and upgrade this road. And what we want to do is add to the work you've already done, and instead of having to rip out what's already been done and start all over again to meet a higher standard. But I, but I think what you're saying is if this is approved as a private access way, 
it in fact has the potential to be used by more than one lot and therefore isn't a private access one. Right. It, it, the thing is, this other lot that uh, the half and reference zone also has no frontage anywhere. So in order for them to get their frontage requirement, they would try to get a private road off of Becky's Cove Lane. If they built. If they built. That's right. Okay. Well, all right. I, I, I understand the issue. I guess that's, unless others disagree, I don't see that as something that we have to require now because it's not, I, I misunderstood at first thought they already use that access way. This is only if they wanted to build, then that would become an issue. That's, that's not something I don't think we need to address, nor do we need to ha have them take care of since it's not really there. That's why I asked that question. If it doesn't exist on a plan, why even think about it at this point? Right. Well, I guess it exists as an easement, but you're right. It doesn't, doesn't exist on a plan. Um, uh, the issue of the trees is, is, a, is a tough issue. Uh, I do think there is a difference where um, the driveway is being put in or where it can easily be expanded. I understand here this driveway has been there a long time, therefore the trees have been there a long time. And in my mind, and this is just a pure kind of logical analysis on my part, balancing the additional benefit of the two feet with taking down uh, all these trees, which obviously are there specifically for the road configuration, uh, I guess looking at it that way, I, I don't think that uh, the additional two feet would would overcome the benefit of having, or keep, I shouldn't say having, keeping um, the existing trees that are, that are there. Uh, normally we would require that, but I guess I, now in looking at the plan and seeing the trees on the plan, which I had not seen before, uh, I can see how it would be a benefit to, to keep that, certainly for the applicant and the neighbors. Um, so in that sense, I guess I don't see the additional two feet where it doesn't seem to be a problem getting in and out as, as outweighing that, uh, that benefit. So uh, I guess I'm, I'm persuaded that, that we, could, we could amend that uh, to, to save the trees. Other questions, David? I think in a further point if um, we would if the applicant was to receive a letter from the fire chief that he was satisfied that that road was adequate for his access then I'd feel comfortable uh, keeping the driveway at the standard size it is now <clears throat> I think we actually we actually have that letter in the package uh, from him I think that was oh the original letter right because we had, we had, our office actually had met down there with him, which is what got the hammerhead expanded onto the Dunham property. But we had walked the road with him, and he was perfectly satisfied if we took care of the two trees with the access of his truck at that time. And we had to put a letter actually into the package. I think we should have a copy of that. Yeah, Barbara. It's, it's actually referenced in um, the town engineer's letter, power number three. It says, as with past projects, we continue to recommend that the existing road standards be maintained for road width, but understand that the fire chief has approved of the current plan, which includes specific tree room permeable provisions. So it's already referenced officially. Yeah, I, I guess I'd be uncomfortable. I, I, I like to, certainly we rely on the information we receive from Public Works, the fire chief, et cetera, and then we have to make the decision uh, to, to condition it on a further letter from the fire chief. I think would kind of leave everybody in a limbo that that we don't really need. It, we've gotten the information. You know, I think we can decide based on the information we have. But I guess I wouldn't. 
I wouldn't require anything further. Well, I, I mean, I agree with attorneys on a board. <laughs> I shouldn't step in here, but he doesn't really say that he, he doesn't really say in this note uh, of October 12th that he considers it adequate. That he considers it. It's here. But that's. But that was. Um, yeah, but but that's not the letter. No, it isn't. No. He, he that was, last sentence in his letter of October 12th doesn't really give us the latitude that his typical letter does. Well, yeah. The problem with both sentences, though, is that it's talking about something that really isn't. Right. At issue, so it's. Well, I think he may you know, have forth. He may have another letter forthcoming. Have you heard from the Archie? Many times. <laughs> Perhaps you can enlighten us as to what, what the letter means. There's, there's, yeah, there's no way I can do that. I've spoken to the fire chief on, on this issue several times. He feels strongly that standards should be adhered to. He feels strongly that the wider the road is, the better. He feels strongly that the applicants have made a compelling case. Right. They've made a compelling case? He right. Feels, he feels he's that sort of struggled with ways to yeah. find options, but he still wants his road. Well, it's our job. It's am I to wrong or that is, I mean, I assume before now there could have been the need for a fire truck to go down this road, right? Oh, the, the, the fire chief took the ladder truck down the road when he wrote okay, the so first. So we're not, we're not talking about, you know, something. Yeah, it's, we, yeah we've got it. We've got it. <laughs> we're not talking about something that is brand new, never been. No, he's, he's gotten the fire. If you look at the plan, uh, you'll note there's a couple of places where it says things that are going to be done for the fire chief. Uh, when the fire chief um, did not know that this plan was going to go to the planning board, when it was assumed that this was something that did not need planning board review, that it was simply going to get a building permit, the fire chief visited the site with the ladder truck, drove it down the road, and please correct me if I have the story wrong, and pointed out things that he wanted changed. Um, and then said, if you do those changes, you know, I'll, I'll be fine. Subsequently, it was determined that this, this lot needed planning board private access way review, otherwise it wouldn't be buildable. At that time, the fire chief said, oh, no one told me that. If it needs private access way review, I want it to comply with the private access way standards, because those are better than the deal I've just cut. <coughs> and and, and I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that. that all else being equal, the 14 feet is better than the 12. I guess what, what I was trying to say before is, you know, now we have to balance that against the issue of cutting down what looks like 20 very large old trees uh, on a driveway that's been used for a long time without, from what I can tell, any prior problem. So to say that it would be better at 14 feet it would if there was nothing there, but it's not what we're faced with. They, I, I guess the question comes up as, as board members, are we willing to um, step in and give an approval that it's adequate for fire protection when the fire chief hasn't really given his good graces? The other, the other issue I'll bring up just to make it a little more muddy, you know, we Thank talked you. as a note earlier in that plan tonight to discuss the possibility of a site walk, I think. And, you know, I don't want to hold this project up, uh, but I, here we are talking about a piece of property that, that I don't have the foggiest as, as, it, as what it looks like, and um, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to hold the project up, but I do recall looking at it when the Partridge is built, but we only looked at it down to the, where they, exited and went on to their property. So, um, but if the fire chief, I, 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 I don't, I, I can't, looking at this letter from the fire chief, I don't, indi I don't receive the feeling of reading this note that he's um, 
he's giving is okay. I don't know how you feel. But, but in, in the previous letter, yeah. he did give us okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maureen. At the risk of making this worse. I'm wondering if it's... If you look I don't at think the, you can, so okay, go good. ahead. I'm looking at the plan. There's only one place where there are two trees directly across from each other. And I think that's the place where you agreed with the fire chief to trim or remove. Okay. And I'm wondering if there's an opportunity for the applicant to work with the abutter and try to find a way to create 14 feet of gravel travel way by swaying this road back and forth a little bit without cutting down the trees. I'm not saying it'll be pretty. No, it wouldn't. It would but, make it but worse. It, but it would get you 14 feet. I know, but it would make one. I'm not sure we could do that because we the the right of way we have is over the Strouch property, not the McGinn's property. Right. Yeah. So, and and to go down through there, even ir irregardless of that, if you went down through there and you swung back and forth and back and forth, is that better for a fire truck? It's only two feet. But I, but I think your point is well taken. Uh, and I don't. Way going straight at 12 feet might be better than, than going fourth at 14. I mean, I'm not 14. sure the fire chief wouldn't present it like that. I mean, I'm, I'm frankly given the discomfort that I hear from several of these board members. Um, it might be it might be worthwhile rather than forcing it right now to take a walk and take a look out there. I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to hold you up. It's just I'm, I'm again. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> well, because honestly, if we put it on the table, it might not come out the way you want and because we're uncomfortable. And that's uh, it. it. Uh, I've heard from several people that they've been on this road, they've traveled this road, they've plowed this road. You know, let's take a look at it. I mean, I, I Barbara, I mean, Joanne, you're the chair. <laughs> if I'm in favor of saving the trees, but if, if we decide to have a site walk, I don't think we should have it without the fire chief. Because I'd like to stand there and look at 18 inch trees and have the opportunity to say something about it. If that's in fact what they are along the road. And I don't Dick. think it's useful to have a sidewalk without doing it with the fire chief. No, I, I, I would agree. Especially like Maureen was suggesting, he was struggling as well. You know, and we can hear what his real concerns are and maybe he'll, in view of Barbara's persuasive tree argument, Back down a little. Well, I mean, I don't know the road. I've never been on it, so I, I can't speak from. But as I look at the plan, I see a huge number of trees along here, and I can see something that we're trying to do to have cover and to have a certain kind of environment. It's been there forever. The truth is that the fire chief said yes initially, and then suddenly he said no, but having nothing to do with the width of the road and, and getting a fire truck through there. And that troubles me. I, it really does. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I know, maybe Maureen can correct me if I'm wrong, but there are private roads and driveways and other access ways in this town that are 12 feet and maybe less, other than this one. Mm. It may serve more. And, you know, have we gotten a list from the fire chief saying I can't access any of these places? I haven't seen that. So, uh, you know, I, I really find it hard to believe that the fire chief is saying he can't get in on a 12-foot well, road. To echo that more, especially given what's being constructed on your property when we're done here. I mean, once he gets to the end here, he's going to have a hammerhead turnaround. Right. right. So, Meaning uh, it's not that he's going to be boxed into a 12-foot old road at the end of the road. He's going to have a, uh, a, stand, a current standard hammerhead turnaround, 30-foot right. right away, um, adequate paved road. I mean... Right. So, so I guess wh wh where I'm coming from is I, to, to interpret the letter as saying fire chief says that, that he can't have access or he can't get in, it, it just it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Um, if the issue of the site walk, I, you know, I will, I will accept the fact that there are trees right next to the, to the road. I've, I have been down there before. I can't say I remember where all the trees are, but I, I will accept that fact as on the plan. Given that, um, 
I don't know what is what it is I would be looking at. I mean, we could have the fire chief bring the ladder truck down there, but I can tell you right now, it's going to fit down the road. I don't need I don't need to see that. Um, so, yeah, Barbara. Well, I'd like to offer a motion for the board to consider. I'm sorry, go ahead, Peter. Well, uh, you want to discuss first? Go ahead, Peter. Well, we can put one on the table, and if she, if Barbara has some amendments, she can offer them, and let's, I'll put mine out there first, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Thank you. I have a motion for the board to consider. Uh, I move that we make the following findings a fact. Number one, Tom Dunham is requesting a private access way permit for a lot located at 11 Becky's Cove Lane, which requires review under section 9-7-9 private access ways. Two, the town engineer has recommended design details that should be added to the plans. Three, the planning board finds to promote better neighborhood development or that there is an existing private access under section 19-7-9 D4B6 that the requested waivers of right-of-way and traveled way width should be granted, period. The 10, four, the 10 foot paving requirement on Becky's Cove Lane adjacent to Shore Road is necessary to protect the pavement and travel safety on Shore Road. Five, the building envelope should reflect the area available for construction on the lot that is not otherwise restricted or reserved for other uses. Six, the applicant should demonstrate right title or interest over any area on the plan which is designed to meet town standards, including easements for emergency vehicles. Seven, the application substantially complies with section 19-7-9 private access ways. Um, I further move that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Tom Dunham for a private access way permit for a lot located at 11 Becky's Cove Road, uh, town map and lot R24S-1 be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that the plans be revised to reflect the comments of the town engineer in his letter dated October 12th, 2004, paragraph 6789. Two, that a right of way for Becky Cove's Lane for the benefit of the lot located at 11 Becky's Cove Lane be a minimum of 30 feet. Three, that the traveled width of Becky Cove, Becky's Cove Lane be a minimum of 12 feet, except for the portion of the property on 11 Becky's Cove Lane, as said in uh, number two. Item number four, that the first 10 foot of Becky Cove's lane extending from Shore Road be paved. Number five, that the building envelope for Becky's, 11 Becky's Cove Lane be revised to exclude private access way right of way and that the 75 foot shoreline zoning setback and be at least 30 foot from an uncontested property line. Six, that the easement from the McGuins be obtained in a form to be approved by the Bandit Planning Department prior to the issuance of a building permit. Seven, uh, that any approval uh, granted by the Planning Board will not include the conveyance of land from Lot 1 as depicted in the plans. And number eight, that there be no alteration of the site nor issuance of a building permit until the plans and materials submitted have been revised, revised to demonstrate compliance with the above conditions. Did everybody follow my modification? Yeah, with one, uh, one change. I believe the paragraphs in the town engineer's letter are five, six, seven, and eight. I'm sorry, just so I have my record clear here. Five, six, seven, and eight? Yes. Did I say six, seven, and eight? You said six, seven, eight, nine. I'm so sorry. That was a misspeaking. I, I did mean. Quite all right, Dave. One question. Uh, number three. Of the of the findings or of the, uh, of the the order. Okay. Yep. Would you repeat that? That the traveled way of Becky's Cove Lane be a minimum of 12 feet, except for. Uh, the land located on 11 Becky's Cove Lane, which would be a minimum of 30 feet, as stated in number two. I, I don't want that to... No, that's the right-of-way. Oh, that's the right-of-way. Okay, then I'll, I'll, amend, I'll amend three then to say that the traveled way of Becky's Cove Lane be a minimum of 12 feet. Okay, good. Oh, Dave, Thank uh, you, David. Your question. A yeah, little Barbara. question, and that is, I think that the, the wall that's that's encroaching is included in number five, is it not? 
Uh, yes. Yeah, I think but, that but, takes you know, care of it. I was thinking about that. We're not approving this building in this location. We have to remember that, meaning that that's still a... Oh, we're just approving on private access for right. You approve the building envelope. Right, right. The actual There's, building can float anywhere inside the envelope. Right, but this is... But within this setback, they can't show this plan to the building inspector and expect a permit because it does show a, a, a encroachment into a shoreland zone. Correct. Okay. Right. So but I think it's, I take, it's taken care of by... Uh, it's not our issue. Five. Second. You're going to have to fix that before the building. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's a motion on that. <laughs> I'm sure we can do that. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. Who's seconded that? Just Barbara. All right. There aren't many choices. <laughs> <laughs> well, David made a good point. I, 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 I misspoke on number three, and I'm glad that was corrected. Okay, so do we all know the motion? Yes. All right. Well. All, all in favor? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Another, <laughs> very much. So what we need to do is take care of all those things, talk to Maureen. Get in touch with Maureen. <laughs> gotcha. Don't talk to us, we'll just Don't continue. Don't talk to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay, the next issue on our agenda is uh, LCC International <laughs> representing U.S. Cellular requesting site plan review of a proposed 180-foot tall telecommunications tower to be built off Bowery Beach Road. Uh, we are here for a finding of completeness. And... Good evening. So we need it yes. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, my name is Ed Shaw for LCC International. Um, we're an author for U.S. Cellular. Um, I want to thank you and the board members and Lori and Maureen for an opportunity to speak tonight. Before I get going too far, I guess I did want to mention that I'm an avid baseball fan and would be interested in deeming this in Application incomplete. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing where, where you don't have any opposition. <laughs> so what's the score? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody, I want to know. Somebody tell us. <laughs> I thought two councils of idiot plugs. No, I thought about it on TV. Not a good idea. Okay, I'd, I'd like to just introduce. Uh, what we're proposing to do here on the first page, it shows... <laughs> Let me go underneath these. is shown on the front here. Information about our application is on here as well. The second page is one um, that shows coming off from Route 77 where the road comes in and does the hammerhead and this is the least area in the area where the tower would be. Uh, on this particular diagram, um, I did want to mention there's one change on this diagram. I had hoped and spoke to Maureen earlier about the folks from site design making the change to adjust this leash area to get out of the wetlands area up in the corner there. They were unable to provide that for me for tonight's meeting, but that will be an adjustment that will be made. I think I can show it a little better on this drawing here. On the third page, this is just the lease area in the right-of-way. 
We're taking that 100 by 100 foot area and adjusting it clockwise to get outside of the area where after the soils engineers went in and identified where the wet wetland area was, there was a section up in the corner there. Originally, uh, United States Cellular was just going to submit an application for our antennas in our building and would leave the responsibility for the additional carriers that would come on there uh, to be taken care of. But I, I do believe at the workshop I got the direction that let's go ahead and plan it for six and do that now. So on the last page here, we've done that. I've had a couple of conversations with the police chief and one of these six locations will be for the public safety. Um, we have not uh, concluded which one will be yet, uh, but that will be shown on the plans that I uh, bring forth for the next meeting. Um, one of the things that we did show on here was the generator pads as well. Um, in each one of these, uh, I only showed four generator pads if you look here, and recently uh, United States Cellular has been placing a lot of sites in many locations in Cumberland and York County. And I've gone back through our plans to determine there are, there are a couple of carriers that do have generators and a couple that don't bother to put them. So after extensively reviewing over 20 sites, we saw that there are only really four carriers that have bothered to put generators in. So we've shown only four generators here and then two without the generators. One of them probably being the fire department who would share the generator with us. Um, one of the things that we ran into when putting the generators on here is normally we put a generator in with a propane tank. The propane tank, uh, fortunately, I guess, has a 10-foot separation requirement from any sparking source. So in order to place four uh, propane tanks inside here and keep that separation, there's not enough area to do that. So one of the ways that... Um, uh, the cellular carriers to get around that is you can have a diesel power generator that doesn't have that um, requirement. So that's what we've shown here. U.S. cellular's generators that they've put in have all been on propane, so the information that I had about those generators was based on a propane-fed one, not a diesel one. The noise difference may be different, and so I need to gather that information and we'll provide it at the next meeting, and that will be included. This drawing here, um, if you recall at our meeting, I'd originally only shown United States Cellulars. What we've done here is showed where the other carriers would be and where they'd be located on the tower as well. Uh, the uh, soils engineers have gone out and they've um, drilled where the tower would go, got the soil samples, and have come up with a design and have provided that for me. Um, in reviewing it and before I brought it here tonight, I did notice that a couple of the antennas, they had 15 foot separation instead of 10. That is not what we wanted to accomplish, so I'd like to send that back to them, but I will provide that in next month's application showing all that information. And the rest is mostly notes. On these drawings, I did get a letter um, Maureen, would, would you mind explaining uh, why Les Berry did the engineering uh, review on this? Or? Certainly. Did okay. the board notice that we got a letter from Les yes. Berry at GH2M? Yes. That's because OST Associates, where our, our, trip, our, stand, our engineer, Steve Harding, works, has a prior relationship with U.S. Cellular, so they have a conflict and couldn't do the work for us. Um, we asked, we actually, we usually use Steve Bradstreet, who right now is representing the Inn by the Sea. He was our backup engineer, so he was not available as well. And we went to St uh, Les Berry, who has uh, no relationship, financial, open business relationship with anyone in Cape Elizabeth at the moment, although he was the engineer for the Sprague Corporation subdivision as well as the engineer for the Cross Hill subdivision. So he certainly had a lot of experience in Cape Elizabeth, and that's why you have a letter from Les Berry in there, because we basically asked him on a Tuesday, and he generated that by Friday. Okay. That's fine. Okay, and basically, uh, not being an engineer, but having site design who put this together, I gave them a copy of that letter. They have been in touch with Les Ferry, and they are in the process of putting the things together that are in that letter. 
Um, but they were not able to do it in time for tonight's meeting, but they will be included, all of them, as well as a correspondence with Les, stating how he feels about whether or not those were met um, based on what site design did do. Okay. So all that information will be provided uh, probably within a week. All right. Uh, there were some questions in that letter, though. I guess uh, in talking with Maureen originally, Les had a couple of things in that letter that may not actually be required. Um, and I guess I, I, I'd, uh, I'd ask for a waiver, or will I just work with Maureen to determine whether or not those are really required? Um, there were some things that. Uh, Les originally wasn't sure whether or not uh, he did a very thorough. Yes, um, the major issue was that uh, Mr. Barry referenced the private access way standards. Okay. And what I have spoken to uh, the applicant about is that they are not coming in for a private access way right. review, but they are building an access road. So they do not have to meet the private access way standards. However, you do have to provide an access road under the site plan requirements, which you are being reviewed for. And some of the um, design standards for the private access way permits, specifically the amount of gravel you need to support a ladder truck, should be very instructive as to what you would need to do in order to meet the site plan standard. And, and we will adhere to that and make sure they incorporate it. Okay. I also went through the uh, Information in here regarding the 19.8.12, um, the Tower and Tenant Performance Standards. Um, I've spoke with Maureen about them, but there were two in particular um, that I wanted to mention. The structural, I think I've already mentioned on here. We did get one back, but we have to make a couple of adjustments on that. I will provide the structural analysis for that. And the FAA determination, or basically whether or not you have to light the tower, we did contact the FAA. Uh, they came back with a preliminary, which is 99% of the time accurate, but they needed 60 to 90 days for a final determination. We are at about 72 days now, so my expectation is we'll get a final determination from them within a week or two, and that will be included in the package as well. And that will show that lighting is not required on this tower at 180 feet in that location. OK. Uh, that could be an issue if it is, I would think. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, again, we're we're reviewing right now just the issue of complete. Right. So uh, the substantive application is probably in a way. So any questions on complete, Sparma? There was one mention of financial capability not being included, and I wonder if it has been submitted. Um, uh, yes, it has been. I, I, I apologize. I, I left a letter from Michael um, on his, uh, in his office on Friday afternoon explaining that the financial, um, uh, the ability to do that financial had been given to him when we went for Strout Lane here in Cape Elizabeth, and I had assumed he was going to be using the same one. Um, I'm, I'm going to update that with first, second, and well, first and second quarter financials for this, and we'll give it to Michael. I had not heard whether or not he would accept uh, that letter or not. Perhaps you did, Maureen. No. I, I, I checked with uh, the town manager when I prepared this memo, and he, and he didn't have anything new. He usually likes to see new information to determine financial capability. Okay. Uh, in the application, I did submit. Uh, some information regarding on the third page. Um, in several of the towns that I applied before, this is a sheet that I have used. It's with the um, better Department of the Secretary of State of Maine, and they have a listing on where the companies are and who, uh, what standing they're in, and this one particularly showed that uh, United States Cellular was in good standing. Yeah, that's, that's not... That's pretty bare bone. Yeah, that doesn't that really means. go to financial... Okay. Well, obviously that's something that needs to be provided at some point. I guess we have to determine whether that's an issue of completeness. Shouldn't, shouldn't hold up completeness. Yeah. Okay. Definitely will be provided a safety. So you're ready for a motion? Any other questions on completeness? Yes. Uh, 
Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans, materials submitted, and the facts presented, the application of U.S. Cellular to construct a 180-foot tall telecommunication tower and utility, bu utility buildings located off Bowery Beach Road, R6-29, be deemed complete. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Um, I think this sh we should have a public hearing on this. I would think so. Yeah. And, and site walk. How about site walk? Everybody want to do a site walk? All right. We need to schedule that. What's that? You already have a date? No. Yeah. I need to your second motion. I'm not getting the date for that. I have the calendar for the site walk you want to do it. <laughs> uh, now, I, we've changed so many times that I don't remember if we like the morning better or what, what do we like oh, better? We're running up against daylight either morning or evening. We're, we're going to have to fix it. Oh. Well, there are other mornings, you know, besides that. Um, okay. We could pick a Sunday, but... Yeah. You could do a weekday morning. Early weekday morning? Early weekday morning. Yeah, let's do it. Um, of course, I didn't bring my calendar, but that's okay. Uh, when? Would, uh, well, when's the next? When would this come up? My question is: Are we going to be on the public hearing for the November meeting? Yeah, that's what I'm. That the November meeting is November 16th. The submission deadline is October 29th. So you could do it any yeah, time in the, the next 29th. two weeks. Before the 29th. Mm -hmm. Right. So that he has time to get in. Right. Any questions or issues we may want to bring up? Right. Let's do it the first of yeah, next week. That pretty much leaves. What What's day that? of the week? Sometime the first right. of next week. Is that a problem? I'm sorry? First of next week? I'm away Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week. So, I mean, don't hold it up because of that. I'm pretty familiar with the site. Um, and we got a lot. We have three members. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to well, probably the should. reason for making it next week, if, if we have a lot of members that can't make it, we'll know soon enough so we can reset right. a date. We can do that Friday? through email. Yeah, yeah, it, Friday, October 29th? Yeah, I could do that. Oh, but that's when the that's submission, submission deadline. Uh, that's not fair. What about the 28th in the morning? It's a Thursday morning. Look. At least that gives them the day. What about now? All right. is, it, is it 28th next 28th. Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. Got to do it. 28th. There's the time. The There's a million dollar question. What awful time do you want it to be in the morning? Well, how long is it going to take? 10 minutes, 15 minutes. 10, 15 yeah. Minutes. It's, it's not far off the road. I'd say 7.30. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I was going to say. 7.30 is good. 7.30. Oh, it's delightful. <laughs> well, it's really nice out at that time. Okay, well, the time clocks will have changed then, so it'll be actually later. I don't know later. if they will yeah. have, actually. It yeah. won't change yet. Oh, no. That's no, it doesn't change until oh, Halloween. Weekend, you're right. We can. Maureen will bring a flashlight. <laughs> you come? Okay. Forget this time, right? <laughs> so, all right. So we got a site walk scheduled. We'll have a public hearing next time. We need to make a motion on that. Are we going to oh, be able to Somebody make happen? a motion on that. On what? What, a site walk? Public hearing. I move that we have the uh, site walk on, on the, the, the public hearing. Are we going to be able to find exactly where it is? Is there a... Yeah, there is a... You know what? There's a line where the beach to beacon race starts. It's a white line right across 77. It's about three feet wide. Okay. And that's right at the entrance. Motion. You ready? Doing a motion? I'm ready. I have a motion for the board to consider that I move that we uh, table the uh, application of the U.S. Cellular, cellular to the November 16th 2004 meeting at which time we'll schedule a public hearing. We'll hold a public second, hearing. Second motion. Hold on. All in favor. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. See you later. See you. <coughs> you get out early so oh, yeah. you can watch the yes. games. Our last uh, agenda item is a request to reduce the front yard setback in the BB district from 100 to 50 feet. Um, this is scheduled for a public hearing. We have discussed this at workshop. Uh, 
the amendment under consideration basically is whether to in in the BB district, which is business. What does it stand for? Business B. Business B. Should know. Um, uh, reducing the setback from 100 to 50 feet. Uh, so I will open the public hearing. Anyone wishes to speak, please approach the podium. <laughs> He's in a <the> fire. <laughs> Um, okay. Anybody? Do you want to speak? No. Okay. Close the public hearing. Um, I have a question for the board. <laughs> well, I, I do want to say something first. This, <laughs> sorry, this amendment is is has come uh, to us in the form of a request by the Inn by the Sea. My feeling on it is I believe that it is a worthwhile amendment for the BB district in general for all the reasons we talked about at the workshop. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is I believe that we should approve this amendment not specifically for the Inn by the Sea and the work they want to do, but I think it's a good amendment for any business in the BB district. So now you can make a motion. Yeah. Before we make before a motion, I have a question or a fact or a discussion I'd like to make. Is we, hit, we took a site walk at the Inn by the Sea. There was a discussion relative to how much of that 100 feet that they needed allowance on. Do you recall what that was? The, you mean how much of the additional 50 yeah. feet they needed? Yeah. I, I don't. How much of the, in, in other words, they complied pretty close to the 100 on the design right now. Uh, they're going to take part of they're not going the full 50 feet, I don't think. No. And I think it's no. important here to note that, that we are reducing to 50 feet, not just for the in by the sea, right. as you stated, Agreed. but also to make a point that they are not going to use up that entire 50 right. feet. That it's, it's, I, I think it's good right. planning to get, I think it's a good change in the ordinance. Agreed. Regardless of what in by the sea. So just Complying with what you said. Motion. My motion for the board to consider. I move that based on the materials submitted and the facts presented, the planning board recommends an amendment to the zoning ordinance that reduces the front yard setback to the DB district, section 19-6-6 from 100 feet. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? All right. Motion to adjourn. Move. Second. All in favor? All right, good work.